I think today, since we have like a, only two musicians in the room, might as well we challenge ourselves and only use Sennheiser normal microphone. Yeah, should be too hard. No. Hey, I'm Jason Stanulis. I'm a recording engineer here at Germano Studios Hit Factory. Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Seam. I'm a mixing engineer at Germano Studio The Hit Factory. Being an engineer here is it's like an exercise in adaptability as we get so many genres, so many different clients, so many different demands, especially being essentially right in the center of New York and Manhattan. Everybody is touring through New York mm. at some point. So you got to see all kinds of artists from all over the world. Some studios only like accommodating like rap music because they don't have a big live room to record orchestra or like Broadway music. We are kind of in the middle. We got a decent sized live room, decent sized control room. We can kind of accommodate and live within different kind of music styles. Yeah. I just like the diversity of music brought to me and give me a different perspective of how I approach music. Because these days, like music, there's no like certain borders. Some jazz musicians want to have a hip hop sound. So you got to be able to cross over two different kinds of music. So the training in Germano Studios really helped me to understand the language between different styles. So I can be the facilitators to bring all the different sound and creativity across different styles. The approach for when an artist comes in is to get them acclimated, you know, to the space and also to get to know what their workflow is. Some of it's dictated by the logistics. Uh, sometimes it's the vision or the, the piece. So it's, it's getting to know what's going to serve, like, as a foundation the best, you know. Is it, is it a track? Is it too, is it a click? What, you know, how do you, how do you like to record? What have you done before? Like, it's, it's about getting them as comfortable as quickly as possible. We try to be there and be very, like, vibing with them and make sure they're inspired and they perform the best. But the last few years, I, I just observe and observe more because the engineer role has become bigger than just engineering. It's like part of production now because it's sound designing. When you're recording a record or mixing a record, you're giving a certain creativity input to the record. So engineer really plays a bigger role in, like, sound designing. Yeah, today is really unique because we're fortunate enough to have like a multi-instrumentalist from Connecticut and also a jazz guitarist from Jersey. Today we record a theme song for a documentary about multi-instrumentalists. And this session is really special because we don't know what we're dealing with, what kind of instruments they bring in. So we try to figure out how we can put everything together and try to make a cool record out of it. So uh, fortunately, today is a busy day for Germano Studios, and Studio One is occupied, where um, we like doing a lot of our instrumental work. So we're in Studio Two today. Our live room situation is is a little tighter, as you'll see. But uh, for two players, um, I think it'll actually be advantageous for the playing off each other. It provides some technical challenges with bleed, but um, it's kind of something that we've learned here. We've had to really uh, explore ways to deal with isolation and bleed. A recording like this uh, has provided like really kind of superior musical results and they're trying to do this in a very sterile, pieced together way. So I think this will be a good, healthy challenge. We work with a lot of like rock bands or acoustic mm -hmm. musicians here. We kind of learn to like work around it and appreciate the bleed or yes. the, the spiel, however you call it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gives a glue to the more orga organic sound. Mm -hmm. Instead of like you isolate everything, everything is super clean, but yeah. then you kind of lost that magic. So we'll help it capture a very, uh, this foundation that has this, this glue to it, and yeah. these overdubs will just only enhance this yeah. bass line. So the way. That's, that's the goal yeah. today. Once we got signals, we're gonna sound check and line check everything. So make sure we got the right signal amount in Pro Tools, and we can start recording it. But at the same time, once we get the signal going, we start experimenting with like different outboard gears like EQ and compression and we try to get the best sound going to tape. 
Studio Two's live room is a little smaller. It's, it accommodates two players, but we have a live guitar amp in the room with drums. So there'll be a little bit of playing around with posi physical positioning in the room, getting the room to sound good first step, yep. and, you know, and uh, just making sure everything down Mind the place. line is just not getting in the way. And then from that point onwards, we will start rough mixing on the console. We're not printing it to Pro Tools, but we try to mix it sound as like a final product and present it to the artists when they finish recording and come in to listen to it. So we try to make everybody happy, we try to make everybody feel like they're stars. I think today, since we have like a, only two musicians in the room and we have like enough Neumann and Heisen microphones to accommodate all the channel we need, might as well we challenge ourselves and only use Sennheiser Neumann microphone. Yeah, it should be too hard. Kick drum has a FET 47, an outside, 421 inside, snare. We have a 441, pretty favorite addition for, you know, yeah. it's been sneaking its way into more and more things. And 441 in the hi-hat, we're gonna try something. Tom's 421. We're really liking the MKH 800s. Try that for overheads, so those are out there. The U47 tube out in the room. The guitar amp right now has a 421 and MKH 800. The MKH-800s have become quite the versatile microphone for us. We've actually started using them on vocalists in a like, spot mic choir setting and um, quickly realized that these are very viable on, on a lot of different sources. They've been put on piano, um, just auxiliary percussion, drums. Uh, I've I put one like as like a close like snare mic and it was like kind of like breaking up a little bit because it's like a condensed, but it was like just perfect amount of like excitement. Right. Like, like we've done some like, we've done some like the really like creative, stuff. like kind of almost pushing it kind of things with it. But also right. it's been this very great, transparent, uh, detailed spot as well. So I was introduced like to the MKH 800 by Todd Wylock, one of the engine, top engineer in New York. We were in a Broadway session, I forgot. I think it's a Hollow Dolly session. It was two, three years ago. So in the session, we're like four or five lead singers. So we're using a combination of Sony C800 and also MKH800. And then later on, like we have those mic in the studios and I've been using them on like drums and, mm -hmm. and pianos. And, but my favorite was using it as a guitar and microphones. So I, I used it on one of the biggest Chris Wu singles. So the clean guitar was using a 421 and, and an MKH800, which, which we'll be using it today. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna go straight into the converters and uh, you know try to just keep right. a nice direct signal path and you know be monitoring on the SSL duality. Yeah, we'll be doing rough mixes on the SSL, but mm -hmm. at the same time we still need some time to do some patching. We already like picked some like cool preamp to use, like the Neve preamp, Focus Right preamp, and the new Heritage preamp. We try to use a combination of the drums and guitar mm -hmm. to try to get the sound we want. But we might change after we listen to it, and we still need to set up Pro Tools and everything, and then we're ready to go. So I'm pretty excited. You? Yeah, yeah looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it.